Ladies and gentlemen, geeks and nerds, welcome to a brand new series called Dissecting Minecraft. And I'm joined here by Methods. Hi Methods, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you very much. So this is a brand new series and we are going to do, as the title says, we are going to dissect Minecraft. And so we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of technical things around the game. We're going to start off with um, some pretty basic stuff, some foundational things. But as the series goes on, we're going to get more and more deeper into this stuff and try and explain as much as possible about the inner workings of Minecraft and the technical side of the game. And this is going to be from all the kind of basic redstone components you see behind us, all the way through to mob spawning algorithms and stuff like that. A lot of stuff that I don't understand, but my friend here, Methods, does. So, <laughs> should we uh, crack on? And Methods, why don't you, why don't you, for the people that don't know who you are, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and uh, stuff like that? Right, I'm uh, Methods. I'm still relatively young. I'm part of the SciCraft server, as you might know. I do technical redstone since almost six years. And yeah, I would say I'm pretty uh, educated in the redstone side of things and all of the other game mechanics. So that's yeah. about it, yeah. Okay, I awesome. do YouTube too. Yeah, also, yeah. so also, also, yeah, Methods does YouTube. And stuff like that so i'm going to stick a link in the description to the to the cycroft uh, discord and also methods channel so i'm going to check that stuff out um yeah well worth well worth looking at all right so should we uh, should we get started let's go all right so here we are and we have a whole bunch of uh, of um of items in front of us so uh, methods are going to play the part of the teacher and i'm going to be the student so i'm going to ask all the stupid questions that everyone's afraid to answer uh, ask <laughs> so um yeah there's no there's no just thing as a stupid question so we're just going to ask away and uh, yeah i'm going to look dumb but that's all right <laughs> that's what i'm here for so uh, should we get started methods with the uh, redstone dust maybe yeah let's go so we basically we have the normal redstone dust it can be powered for 15 blocks before it runs out. So if you just flick this lever and go to the back here and add one more, this one is no longer powered. Right. That's basically the backbone of technical Minecraft. Right, right. And, and for those that just aren't, aren't sure, uh, this uh, I've got a texture pack on here, so it looks slightly different to the normal game, so we can see the power levels uh, as we go along. So you can see the numbers here. So when it gets to zero, that means that's not powered. But uh, and you can see from those numbers how much stick, how much strength, how much redstone strength, power strength we have, all the way up up to fifteen out of that lever. All right, awesome. Okay, and then right here we've built up all kinds of power sources. So we have the normal button, the stone button which keeps uh, powered for 20 game ticks. Mm. And then we have the wooden button, which keeps powered for 25 game ticks. Right, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there, Methods. What is a game tick? Let's talk about game ticks. How many ticks are there? What are they? All right. Let's so talk about game ticks, shall we? The game has ticks. Okay. Every second, the game does 20 game ticks. What right. does that mean? So basically, a tick is something where something happens. It's every second is diverted into 20 ticks. Mm -hmm. And this way, we can pretty much time stuff. Right. So in, and inside a game tick, the game does a whole bunch of different things. And yeah, I've got to, I'm getting up with that for already. <laughs> so so, that, so we, divide, we divide a second into 20, 20 segments, and that's called a tick. And a bunch of stuff happens in each tick. And a lot of stuff we do with redstone is around timing. And uh, having a concept of a tick is very important. But it's just a 20th of a second. Yep. OK, awesome. So this button here stays on for 20 game ticks. This button here stays on for 50 game ticks, which we can also show here. OK. And this one here will be a bit longer. Okay, awesome. And then we have the pressure plates, which react to, for example, me standing on them or a mop. Okay. Also, this pressure plate here is on for 20 game ticks. And this one here is on for, let me guess, 50 again. Okay. Like the wooden button. So if we quickly step on that. See, also there's a specialty here now. For example, the stone pressure plate will not react to any items, ah. while the wooden pressure plate will. Right, okay. There's our first special case here. Okay. And then we have the heavy weighted and the weighted pressure plate. Those okay. both will stay on for 10 game ticks. 
So you can see that they're, they're really fast. It says half a second, right? Yep. Both are the same in that. And they have another specialty. So as you can maybe tell, they oh. only give a power output of one. Okay. But it could, of course, be much more. And what they do is they count the amount of entities or items that are on there. Just keep queuing pistons on top of that and maybe some other stuff. Oh, wow. You can tell now the signal strength rises up. And does that is that the same for for mobs? Like if I had a whole bunch of zombies on there, can I tell how many zombies are in that on that pressure plate? Yes. Ah, yes. Awesome. So there's flowcharts on the wiki that can tell you exactly how many mobs per signal strength you need. Right. Awesome. To increase the level. Okay. Good stuff. Then we basically have the redstone torch, which is pretty much just a power source you can place. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part about it is it can invert signals. Right. So this bottom torch now turns this top torch on. Right. So when we use a torch, right, so this is something I want to ask about because, um, so the problem that I have, and I, I suspect that many people watching have the same problem, a lot of the basic stuff I kind of understand, but when I get to build something, I fall down very quickly <laughs> in trying to put something together. So for example, this redstone torch, what blocks is it actually powering? Like if we had a bunch of like lamps around it maybe, what, like, is the block it's standing on powered? The ones next to it, the ones above it? Where, where does that power uh, extend to? So the power from the redstone torch, let's actually use the lamps, that was a good idea. Goes to all the sides mm -hmm. and to the top. Right, but not the one it's on, not the block it's on. No, not the block that it's on. Okay. Um, this might be, I'm not sure if this is the right place to ask, but I'll, I'll ask it now and we can put it off if we need to. But um, there's a difference between strongly powered and weakly powered, right? So yes. should we talk about that with the redstone torch? Maybe demonstrate? That might be quite good, yeah. So we have a strong and a weak power. That means basically if we put just a piston on top of this block here, mm -hmm. it is strongly powered by this torch. It's directly next to it mm. or on top of it, it's strong power. But we can also put a block on top of here and right. then the piston and it will do exactly the same. But it is weak powered now since right. the power has to go through this first block and then this block here becomes powered, which in case powers this piston on top of it. Right. So when a when a block is strongly powered, like this uh, this block above the redstone torch, is that then like kind of like can be can you think of it like as a as a power source and then it, it will then power one block away from it, like in all in all directions. Yes. Okay. Right. So if we just take the the lamps again, mm -hmm. can pretty much do the exact same thing we did one layer lower mm -hmm. with the torch, and it still is all power. Right. So all of those blocks powered. Right. Uh, but then when you take if you take that one out, it depowers those ones. So that block there. It has to be a so it has to be a solid block in there. It can't be. It has to be a solid block. Only solid blocks conduct redstone power. Right. Okay. okay. And is it easy to know this again? This might be a silly question. Is it easy to know what's classed as a solid block versus a non-solid block? Because there's various there's various um, terminology like solid blocks, transparency. There's like it's partially full unfortunately block. Unfortunately, not that easy to know because there's a bunch of special cases. But usually you can test it out with a torch and just a lever. Okay. Just put a torch here and a lever and whatever block it is. And this is a solid block. It's, for example, take the glass. We can still put a torch on it, but we can no longer place the lever. Right, okay. It's not a solid block. Right. Same goes, for example, a trapdoor. We couldn't even place the torch on top of it. So right. it's not a solid block. Right, so if ever you're... Trick to okay. test this out would be... For example, using some other things like redstone dot and a repeater. Mm -hmm. So if you just powered this here and it was a solid block, the repeater should turn on. Ah, uh, right. Okay. If you do this here, you can see repeater's on. Not a solid block. Not a solid. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, so that's 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 actually that's really useful. So that's something that as you as we're building up our own contraptions, we can do that test to trying to find those, those kind of blocks that might be unique in a certain situation that would be repowered. Okay, awesome, good stuff. I've learned something already. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. 
All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's let's move on then. So the next one. All right. Next we have the redstone block. Mm -hmm. It's also basically a solid power source. So we can just place it somewhere, and it will from all sides that it can reach something, it will power it. So on all four sides, and even top and bottom, this will be powered. This will be. So it basically gives out a constant power signal to all sides, all six sides. Right. Awesome. And right, so if I do, okay, so that's, so is that similar to, so when we, when we strongly powered this block above the redstone torch right here, so we did this, so this block above is strongly powered. Is that the similar to what this redstone block, redstone that's block is doing? The, that's the difference to the redstone block. It does not strongly power anything adjacent to it. Right. So it's so weakly we, powering, so it's weakly powering the, the lamp above it. Yep. Right. Okay. So if it would strong power, then this lamp should technically be on, but it isn't. Okay. So that's the difference for the redstone. Okay, awesome. Okay, good stuff. Next, we have the first very important part, the repeater. Okay. So as we've shown before, redstone can only go for 15 blocks before it runs out. And what we can do now is basically add a repeater, which will give us another 15 blocks of length. Right. And the repeater has two more little things. It introduces delay to the whole system. So every repeater gives two game ticks of delay. Okay. That means when this redstone here feeds into this repeater, two game ticks later, this line here turns on. Okay. And you... you can also add more delay. So right now it's in the basic setting, it's two game ticks. Okay. Now it's four, now it's six, now it's eight. Right. Okay, so I'm going to ask another question now that's going to be more confusing. So is there a difference between a game tick and a redstone tick? And I kind of know the answer, I think, but I'll let the master explain. <laughs> yes, there is. So there's usually we refer to redstone ticks because of the repeater, actually, because it gives one redstone tick of delay. One redstone tick is two game ticks. Mm -hmm. The right. only reason I do not like to use this is because we can generate different signals. We can also generate a free game tick signal. Right. And it's just a game ticks is more scientific. You're better off adapting to game ticks from the start. Okay, so, we would, so, so one redstone tick okay. equals two game ticks. Two game ticks equal one redstone. Okay, always so, keep that in mind. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll keep talking about game ticks to keep things uh, simple. <laughs> okay, all right, awesome. Okay, next we have the comparator. Mm -hmm. It has a bunch of special functions. So first of all, it can also be used to lengthen signals as we can tell here, but there's already something special. The comparator only outputs the signal it also gets. So right here, we feed in a signal of signal strength one, right. and we also get an output of signal strength one. So the comparator basically keeps the signal strength alive. Right, so can you chain these also, together? So if I have a bunch of these. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't right. matter how many. They also okay. give two game ticks of delay, Okay. but they have a few more special things. For example, um, a comparator will only react if you, the signal is longer than three game ticks. A repeater will actually uh, react to any signal you feed in there, no matter how short it is. Right. And a comparator needs a minimum of two game ticks, two and a half, actually. Okay. Right. So, so okay. for example, we built a very standard pulse generator here that gives us a very short pulse. Then you will see this repeater actually does not react at all. Add a right. comparator, sorry. Okay. And if we now add a same with the repeater. Yeah, it's not coming on, right. And if we add it to two, ah. then we can see it actually reacting. Right. Okay, that makes some sense. Because I think I think when I've been playing around with things, I've seen I've seen that when I've had um we'll get onto observers in a minute, but I've seen that when I've used an observer that gives a quick pulse then I don't get a reaction from the, uh, from exactly. the comparator. Okay, awesome. That's now the know. most basic use of the comparator is actually, I think, reading out inventories. Mm -hmm. So what this comparator can do, if I put an item here in this chest, will turn on. And of course, it also does the whole signal strength deal. So mm -hmm. if we fill it up a little bit more, you can probably see it going up slowly. Yep. yep. 
and if the chest is completely full it will give out the max output right and is that that signal is that a like a uh what's the right word like, like a proportion of what's filled so depending on the container so obviously exactly. this is a, a chest so it's got many many spots like 27 places but if i have a hopper that only has five then it, exactly. it just divides the, the total. There's also to flow charts on the wiki for that. That is just too much to list it all right here. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Also, there's much more to the comparator, but I think we will make a special episode about that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you can do all kinds of things like comparing different strengths and, and yeah, there's... logic with them and all kinds of crazy stuff. And That's too much fun. Yeah, things like clocks, stuff like that. So yeah, that would be, that'd be useful. Yeah. All right, great stuff. All right. Oh, okay, next yep. we have the piston and the sticky piston. I guess we just do this. And it will show you what it does. So right. the normal piston just pushes a block and the sticky piston can push and retract a block. And so this is this, this, so two this, game takes. Two games, right. And obviously this is quite basic, but you can think of the sticky piston as having, because it's sticky, it's got some glue on it that's going to keep that block stuck to it. Um, but there is an occasion where it can lose its block. Yes. So <laughs> a nice leading with, question there for you. <laughs> with sticky pistons, if you feed a two game tick signal or shorter into mm -hmm. a sticky piston, it will actually lose the block. As I will demonstrate here. Right now, you did something. You did something funky there. So that. So we're coming to observers in a minute. But that looks like that observer is powering the block above the piston, and the piston still reacted. So what's uh, what's going on there? So that was a quick showcase of quasi-connectivity <laughs> that used to be a bug, but by now it's more or less a feature. Mm -hmm. And that basically means that it can power blocks one block diagonally from it, below it. One block, so right. this observer here actually just powered this piston. It did never power this block above it here. This block was never powered. It just powered this piston. Right, hold on. Just I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just processing that for a second. Wait, so so this observer, so normally when you have an observer, we'll talk about those, I guess, in a minute, but um, normally when you have an observer, if you if it if it sees it, we'll talk about that in a minute, but yeah, so if an observer powers something, like for example, it would power this lamp if it had a, if it, if it, if it powered something, right? That's powering the block right behind it. But in this case with the piston, so that air block still gets power, Right, because of the observer, but because it's the block above the piston, the piston still sees that as a as a, yes. a way to trigger so itself. So basically, if we look at this here, we just have two pistons on top. Mm -hmm. This concrete block here is diagonally one above the lower piston, and I flick this lever. Right. Then both pistons will extend. Right. So where does that come from? That is the QC bug, basically. That means that a diagonally lower block. If it's a piston or a dropper or a dispenser, will still get powered. One specialty is it will actually not receive the needed up. So now I've flicked this lever. This piston here is technically powered, but it doesn't know about it. So as soon as I place a block here, it will actually extend. And if yeah. you, for example, have a second piston on top of here, then it will get updated by the piston itself and already know it. So this way we can basically power twice the amount of pistons. Right, okay. So when I've heard this before, one way I've heard of people talking about it is trying to imagine what would power a door. So if I had a door here, um, and this power source here, it would it would power you know, the, the door. Is yeah, that, that's, a, that a... that's a very neat trick here with the door. That's a good idea. So if this door is powered, all pistons on these blocks where the door is will also get powered. Another trick you can use is the lamp. So this lamp here turns on, which in fact would power the piston below here. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I, I think we can also make a special episode. Yeah, about I think it. so. There's so much more to QC. Okay. So, I think it's, so it's just a basic gist of it. One block diagonally below it. Okay. You can power a piston. And if that happens, it does not get the update by itself. You have to provide that. Okay, great. So yeah, I think I think we do. We'll, we'll get into that in a bit more depth uh, a bit later in the yeah. series. But uh, that's just a quick sneak preview of what we're going to talk about later on. Okay, great stuff. Okay, next we have the observer. So the... I've got to admit, I think the observer is probably one of my favorite blocks. I love it. Oh, for sure, mine. So the observer is also basically just a power generation. 
-hmm. but it's a bit special. It already generates a quick pulse. So if I just place a block in front of you, you can see the redstone lighting up for exactly two game ticks. Mm -hmm. It also gives two game ticks of delay. So if I place this block here two game ticks later, it will power this line here for two game ticks. Right. And now the specialty about the observer is it detects block state changes. Okay. So what is a block state change? Block state change, for example, is this fence gate opening and closing. Right. Block state change is this lever going up and down. Right. So it's something about the block that changes. Right. Exactly. Even even a block breaking or placing is a block state change. Right. So okay. pretty much everything that happens in the game that does something is a block state change. Also, a block state change, for example, is this piston moving that observer. Right. So this will even also give us an output. Okay. So even though it's it's still looking at an air block. So here it's looking at an air block. When you move it, it's still looking at an air block, but it detects that it's looking at two different blocks in effect. Yep. Okay. That's right. basically all about the observer. Okay, fantastic. Then we have the tripwire hook. Let's quickly build this up. Tripwire hook basically is a floating pressure plate, I would call it. So it will also detect all kinds of entities going into it. Okay. So is and that so is that strongly powering this this concrete? Yes. Okay. So we can light up all of those around it. Okay. Exactly. And the specialty about the tripwire hook is that it gives a one game tick delay. Mm -hmm. So one game tick after it got triggered, it will power all of these lamps. And I think it's 10 game ticks it stays on. So half a second. Okay. And so can that detect, is it just players that can detect or can it detect no, anything? everything. Else? Every single entity in the game that includes players, mobs, items, uh, projectiles, pretty much everything. Okay. Besides blocks of Okay, and it's so I'm just hovering over the string in the center, and I'm not sure how easy that is to see, but there's a like a light hit box that you can see on the string. So anything, if I interact anywhere with that box, that's where it's going to take effect from. Okay, next we have the dropper. It pretty much just drops items. So if you throw a bunch of items in here and power it, these items get shot out and mm -hmm. just fly a little bit random to all sides. Mm -hmm. And it also gives a four game tick delay. Okay. That's so cool. every four game ticks, you can power this dropper and it will shoot out an item. That's the max speed you can power. Right. Okay. And next we have the dispenser. Mm -hmm. It's basically the exact same for items. As you can tell. Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit special. So there is a few blocks you can feed in here that will actually not just be dropped out as items they will be placed in the world. For right. example, arrows. This thing can shoot arrows for us. Let's get some. Okay. Or for example, TNT could go in here. <laughs> yeah, now, now <laughs> we're talking. No <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> and what about things like water and lava? Water and lava can be placed with this. Yep, that's a good one. Maybe do a quick demonstration with some water. Okay. It can be placed and also picked up again. You, of course, need the bucket inside of it to pick up water. Right. So if it's got an empty bucket inside and a, a liquid in front of it, either water or lava, it will pick it up. And if there's a bucket with a liquid inside, it will dispense it out into the world. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. And it does, this, it does that with boats as well? It will just dispense like a boat? Boats would also work, yep. I think they, that's all the blocks the dispenser interact with. Buckets, arrows, boats, TNT. Does a boat, does does a boat have to be in front of water for it to work? There has to be water. If I so do that. On, I think on right. this block here, we would need the water boat to work. Okay. Yeah, it goes. And that's pretty much all about the dispenser. There's one tiny specialty. Oh no, I forgot two blocks. So 
It can also place wither skeleton skulls oh. if soul sand is close by and right. pumpkins. <laughs> okay. So, for example, we could make a snow golem with this automatically. He's going to admit he's demised pretty quick, though. <laughs> uh, bye, see you later. <laughs> and bye bye. Okay. Works the same with the wither. Don't think we want to mm -hmm. test that now, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, not right now. Not right now. Um, so that can dispense. So does that dispense uh, items onto a player? So if I was standing here, like if there was some armor in here, we can use this to dispense oh, yeah. stuff onto me, like even that pumpkin, I guess. Pumpkin armor. Um, what else? I think that's it. Weapons work as well. <laughs> okay, good stuff. <laughs> And I think that's now actually it about the dispenser. Okay. <laughs> oh, of course, the, the most important one, we forgot totally about it, bone meal. So if you feed bone meal into the dispenser and you power it, it will actually bone meal the crop in front of it. Mm. Goes. And that's probably the most used case for the dispenser. You can make all kinds of farms with that. Nano farms, crop farms, tree okay. farms. Pretty much everything that's growable with bone meal okay. is in some way automated with the dispenser. So just in, just with that, on the uh, where so where can a dispenser be in relation to the crop? Does it have to be next to it like that, or can it be above it, below it, that kind of stuff? It has to be directly adjacent. To the, so to of the course, crop. diagonal doesn't work in Minecraft, but all of the blocks around it will work bone mealing. If you bone meal grass, it will actually make tall grass and flowers and all kinds of sort of it. So with the dispenser, that's a special case. You can actually power grass, uh, grow grass from below, since it's still a grass block even from below. Okay. Because right. you can actually click the, the bone meal on the grass. So it's still adjacent to the crop or the grass block in this case. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I get it. Uh, bye <laughs> There we go. Okay, but awesome. Right. That still applies the same rule. It's adjacent. It's adjacent, it. right. And I think the, the grass block is actually the only block you can bone meal. So that's why it still works in this case. Right, good and stuff. Next, we have the hopper, mm -hmm. one of the most important blocks in mm. Minecraft. Yes. What does the hopper do? It transfers items. So if I just throw an item onto this hopper, it will quickly disappear. And it pushed it into this chest here. Right. And via shift clicking, you can point it into this chest. You can point it into the ground. You can point it to all sides. And okay. besides upwards, upwards does not work. It's only downwards or to the side. Right. And a hopper sucks up items every game tick and transfers items every eight game ticks. Eight, eight game ticks, was that? Yep. That means the max speed of a hopper would be 9,000 items per hour. So what about if you have, so the one, one question that I'm not always sure about, but uh, obviously there's lots of designs where you have hoppers on top of each other with uh, chests, like a, like a uh, storage room. Yep. And what happens there is the items will go down first into the chest and fill those up and then they fill up the chest above them, right? So kind of downwards takes priority. So what's, what's actually happening there is, is the, are they being sucked down and then pushed across, or are they being, how, how does, what's actually happening there? So let's imagine this here. If we throw an item in here, it will always go into the lowest chest mm -hmm. until that lowest chest and the hopper here is completely filled. Mm -hmm. And this simply happens because the first item is here in this top hopper. Mm -hmm. And then it technically would try to go into this chest, but mm -hmm. the bottom hopper already sucked it out. Right. So it's it's a priority thing. It's generally priority is always downwards. Right. And so does no that so does that happen every every tick? So every tick it do all the hoppers try and suck from above yeah, like them first? I said before, every game tick the hopper tries to pick up items. Right. Okay. So it's the, the hopper below the top one that actually tries it every game tick. Oh there's an item, suck. Right. Sucks it out of there and Right. And so so it. before so before this one gets a chance to push it into the chest, one below it's already sucked it down. Okay, awesome. And then last but not least, we have the trap chest, which can be used for traps. 
<laughs> so if you just open it, you can tell in the back we get an output mm -hmm. of signal strength one. And that's pretty much all it does. So if we use our new knowledge of uh, a repeater, for example, and I put a repeater in here, then if you're unsuspecting, you you can open that chest. Hey, what have you done? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. So we blew a massive hole in the world. OK. <laughs> all right, so I think that's a, that was a really good sort of introduction to uh, the basic technical building blocks. So uh, in, in the next sort of upcoming episodes, we're going to dive into all this stuff a bit deeper. Um, one of the things we're going to do as well is we're going to start taking some contraptions that uh, either Methods has built or I have or some other people in the community have built up. And then we're going to dissect them down and sort of explain how they work, why they are designed the way they are. Um, and so I give people an understanding of those things so they can they can sort of uh, make changes themselves and uh, bring them into their own world. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it was just very important that we get this basic introduction out of the way so mm. we don't get the same questions every every yeah. time we make a new episode. So this has yeah, yeah. to be the start of it. Yeah. And I'm sure as we're talking about those other things and we're getting more in depth, there'll be more questions that come to light that we, we can answer as as as, uh, as we go along. Oh, you can be sure about this. This was not all the information related to those blocks. <laughs> There's much, much more. All right. Okay, shall we wrap it up then? So, uh, right. yeah, so thanks for joining me, Methods. And uh, this has been super cool already, <laughs> already learning stuff. So, uh, yeah, can't wait for the next one. And that just about does it for the first episode of Dissecting Minecraft. That was super cool. And of course, that was just the foundational stuff. We're going to get much deeper and much more uh, technical as we go on. Uh, but yeah, if you found that useful, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, get it in that comment section. In particular, I'd be interested to hear in uh, what kind of stuff you want us to talk about. So is there something in Minecraft on the technical side you don't understand that you think uh, it'd be useful for us to delve into and uh, talk about all the nuts and bolts of it? Yeah, so get that stuff in the comment section. All right, until next time, my geeks, I will see you later.